So what are the steps to breaking 80? So the, the first step to being able to break 80 is playing the golf course from a distance that's manageable for you. And by manageable for you, what would, what would you say that means, Ed? Well, I would venture to say that um, the last thing you want to do if you're a guy that, that what, what, what the average is what, a 200, 220 yard driver of the ball, you don't want to play a 7,000 yard golf course. No. You really don't. So you'll probably want to play somewhere in the 6,000 to 6,200 yard distance yeah. range. My rule of thumb, you'll know you're playing the proper set of tees if you don't have to hit fairway woods into all the par fours. Or long iron. Or long iron. Right. So if you can hit, if you can reach the par fours with middle irons on almost most of them, then you're probably playing a set of tees that's okay. Middle to short irons. Yeah, yes. middle to short. Yeah. If you're, if you're having to hit fairway woods and long irons into most of the par fours, you're playing a distance that's too long and too challenging for the average player. Yep, I'll agree to that. Okay. So what's next? Now that we've selected the proper set of tees for our level of skill and our length, the next step is we've got to make sure we keep our tee ball on the grass where we can find it and hit it again, right? So it's Hopefully. got to stay in play. Yep. Because if we hit, all it takes to be outside of being able to break 80 is you lose four or five balls and you're not going to break 80. No, because you're not going to get enough birdies to offset the problem. Yeah. We can live with the bogey, but we can't have doubles and triples. So in a typical round of golf, if you can play that same ball all day and never lose it, you're, you've got a really good shot. you got a really good shot. Yeah, yeah. you do. And that tags into another topic, which is hitting the one-shaped shot that you like. You know, this idea of you having to curve the ball left to right, right to left, whatever it is. And, and by the way, you, it may not be your preferred pattern for the day. You may go to the range and find that, you know what, today I'm just not feeling it and today I'm hitting it a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Well, ride that pony all the way in, Yeah. if that's what it is. And most people find that they have one shaped shot that's a lot easier for them to hit. Yeah. Generally, you know. Whether they like it or not, it is the one shaped shot that they hit the most common. And so that's the one you should play. Right. It's like the old adage my, my dad said, you dance with what you brought. That's right. So, <laughs> so now that we understand they were playing the proper set of tees, we're playing a certain shot shape all day long. Now we've got to make sure we're picking targets that are conservative enough that allow for some error. So we're not going to, we know we're not going to, that's how we keep from losing those golf balls. Right. So what's a typical dispersion? We're, we're talking for, you know, me, a professional golfer. How far offline would I, am I typically going to hit it? Well, I would say, of course, that depends on the person, right? Yes. And it depends on a number of other factors. But I would venture to say if we had a shot link data for you, it's probably going to be somewhere between 30 and 35 yards left to right. That's really close. I've actually tracked this a couple of different times. And my, my dispersion is 4%. And that means 4% either side of center line. Okay. So that's 8% of my total distance, and I drive it out there 320 most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's about 30 yards. There you go. <laughs> so, so, it was a good guess. Yeah. So I've got about a 30-yard dispersion out there, and I'm pretty good. This is my best club. The average person's going to hit it probably at least as crooked as I do, even though they don't hit it as far. Correct. So they better pick an area to put the ball into that's at least 30 or 40 yards wide, minimum. Correct. Correct. Especially off the first tee. Oh yeah. When anxiety generally is the highest. So we're going to play this one hole, and Ed here is going to be my caddy, and he's going to help me pick my line and build a plan of attack for this hole. Okay. So walk through the hole a little bit, Ed. So this is a 418 par four. Uh, the fairway actually dog legs a little bit to the right. You have about a 271 carry over the uh, the right center bunker, which is nothing for Milo. So I'm guessing with Milo's shot pattern, he's going to aim probably right over the center of it or the right center of it and just send it. Okay, and I've got the wind blowing kind of left to right right now. That's correct. So I'm just going to, you, you called my shot. I've played this golf course a fair number of times. So I'm, sure. I'm fairly <laughs> confident in what I'm going to do. Although I haven't hit any balls today, so this will be my first. But I'm going to hit this ball. I'm going to try to start it right at that bunker mm -hmm. and then just let it 
naturally, like yep. my balls do, they kind of leak off to the right. Yep. So let's walk through that and hit one out there. So before he pulls the trigger, he's going to pick an intermediate target so he can line the face up to where he wants to start the ball over. Nope. And I'm before I pull the trigger, I'm going to get warm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm guessing he's going to pick a little spot, probably somewhere out about here, maybe a leaf or something of that nature. Yeah. And that's where he's going to square the face up to. And then he's going to send it. You could say that again. What did I do? Tagged it right where you want it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've hit our tee ball. We find ourselves kind of in the middle of the fairway mm -hmm. with an 88 yard shot to a front left pin. That pin's only like five paces from the front edge. Yep, and probably about seven or eight paces from the left. Yeah, and over there to the left, there's a nice little bunker that would be a fairly tough up and down if we put it in it, so. Yep, pretty deep short-sighted and it's six eight feet deep we don't want to be there right so we want to make sure we miss fat fat side which would be right and a little long ideally in this scenario so the idea here is that he may not necessarily aim it directly at the pin per se he may pick a target five feet to the right yep and give himself the widest berth in case he happens to pull it a little bit and Espe he can still have a putt for birdie especially since my lie this this ball is a couple inches above my feet it's got a little mud on the side of it you know I want to make sure I don't hit it into some trouble. Right, the most forgiving possible. So another one of our keys for breaking 80, we just we just got to. We're inside of 125 yards with a wedge in hand. Right. Get good with your wedges from inside of 100, 100 125 yards, and that's going to make life a lot easier. Yeah, most definitely. Because your wedges are both your defense and your offense. So if you get out of position, you put it in position where you've got a wedge in your hand, you hit it up there on the green, and you get away with a bogey at, uh, at the worst, right? Correct. And then when you hit a nice drive like I did here, now I go on offense. If I hit a nice wedge, I give myself a good look at birdie. Sounds good. Okay, so let's see if I can execute this. So same process. I get behind it here. I'm going to pick my intermediate target in this so there's a little round bush up to the right of that pin, about five to seven feet. I'm going to aim it right on the right edge of that bush. And then I'm just going to, 88 yards, it's a tweener for me, so I'm going to have to feel this one out a little bit. I'm going to try to land it on 90. So, not quite a full shot. So I'm, in my practice swings, I'm feeling about the amount of speed I want to put into it. And then I'll try to execute. And I pulled it a little bit. You also had a little bit of mud on there. And that mud pushed it, but I got it on the green. That was definitely the mud. <laughs> That's all right. That's why we aim to the fat part. So as we understand that the, the keys to being able to break 80, much of it depends on hitting the tee ball in play and being good with the wedges, how should we prioritize our practice? That's a great point. I mean, usually most of us are gonna have three to four wedges. And we should spin, and uh, of all the time, yes, driver is important, but if you're going to, you're probably going to use wedge and putter more than anything else in the bag. And so let's make sure that we spend an adequate amount of time hitting a consistent low point, consistent shot, relatively consistent with, we know our distances, because we don't want to get up here and not be 100% sure, is it, is it 75% effort with a pitching wedge? Is it all out with a sand wedge? What do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Those are things that you should practice on the range. And I, th I if we were going to break it into a allotted time, I think you need to spend about 50% of your practice time with wedges and putter. Probably almost 30% or 40% of it should be with your wedges. Maybe 25% with your, your driver and other tee clubs. And then maybe 25% with hitting iron shots. Yep, I'll agree to that. Something like, some, some kind of ratio. I don't have an exact ratio, but I would say at least 50% with wedges and putter. And that's why it's very important that not only do you practice for that, but that you understand your stats. And so there's a lot of apps out there that you can use. So you can get a good sense of what your misses are with the driver, what your average distance is, the whole nine yards. Then you can also figure out 
what are you best at? What is there a yardage? Is there a club? Is what is your normal miss with this club and that club and the whatnots? Is it your chipping? Is it your bunker? Is it your putting, etc.? And then you can build your practice routine about around that. Mm -hmm. What you need to work on more and what you still need to continue to solidify as good. Awesome. So we're rolling. So here's what I've left myself. I did wind up hitting it a little short left, but luckily not too much. Nope, you're about nine inches off the green. Nine inches off the green. I've got what? One, two, three. So 12 feet to the hole. Mm -hmm. So it was a reasonably good shot, but I, I, I missed my spot. I was trying to hit it five feet to the right of the pin. Yep. So I missed my spot by 20 feet. Yep. Well, it happens. It happens. So now what do we have here? Well, generally we're going to walk up and as we're walking up either from the cart or from as we're walking down the fairway, we're going to assess the topography as we walk up. Yep. Is it uphill, downhill, side hill? You know, what's the dominating features? In this case here, we have the mountains and whatnot. So those are some of the factors you're going to start determining before you even decide to start looking at your read and then build that in and then figure out your speed and your line. So as you walked up to this one, what did you see? Well, from here, it looks like it's a smidge uphill and it's going to be a little bit left to right, but I mean very little. Okay. I'm going to go with your read. A little uphill, a little left to right. I'm going to play it about just outside left. And try to put a good stroke on it. Yeah. Just burnt the edge. Darn. Okay. So now we, this leads us to another point that we want to cover on how to break 80. And that would be managing our emotions and expectations. I almost made that putt. I could get really mad and down that that didn't go in. But if you actually understand statistically what were my odds of making that putt, it was less than 50-50. So it was a coin, less than a coin flip. Yeah. So, you know, it's, should, could I have made it? Yeah, I almost did. But I'm not going to get mad that I didn't. Yeah, pars will not hurt you. Par, in the game of breaking 80, pars do not hurt. And we don't want to carry what your expectations, your misleading expectations on to the next shot and then start pressing when you don't need to press. Yeah, that, that added baggage is going to make the game a lot it's more difficult. It's hard to carry it around. Exactly. So once I've missed a putt like that, in my mind, I just think, did I hit my line? And I assess what I did. I felt like I made a pretty good putt. I may have pushed it just a hair. I'm not positive. I, th I think I hit it pretty good. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not upset. And I left it less than a foot away from the hole, or right around a foot from the hole. So Easy I, tapping. I got a kick in par. So I've just, yep. I'm on my way to breaking 80. That's what that's our goal, break 80. Okay. So we're gonna go into the last couple keys we want you to work on to be able to break 80. Yep. And those are working on your putting in the right way. First, we want to get really good inside of six feet. Yep. Because those are the, the putts that we should have a very good chance of making, right? Hopefully, yes. And we should get really good at making those putts. I know from six feet and in, the pros are going to make a pretty high percentage. I think from six feet, it's probably around eight, 80%. And then as we go in, it gets higher and higher and higher. Yeah. So from six feet and in, it's up in the 90s. But if we're worried about breaking 80, what's the likelihood we're going to have that for birdie? It's probably, probably not for, that likely, but it's, it, par. if it's a par putt, we want to make it though, because if we keep it. missing them, we're gonna, it's going to get above 80 pretty fast. So our goal here is that you also work on anything 30 foot and better, because we want to try to get that thing inside of a three foot circle where our odds are much greater of making par and walking away happy. So a couple of really good practice drills that I like for honing in on these inside of six foot putts would be like a clock drill. Yeah. Where you make a circle around the hole, maybe three feet and then one at six feet. Mm -hmm. And you just practice rolling those in. You get used to different breaks and you get good at reading them, holding them. And if we get good at that, we take the pressure off of our 30 feet and out putts. Correct. And so I like to do, I call it ladders from 30 feet and out. So I'll go out to around 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet and practice rolling it to something three feet behind the hole. So I'm going to try to roll it and keep it between the hole and something three feet behind the hole. Just so I'm developing a sense of speed. And why are you trying to ladder it to 
let's say three feet past the hole. We might go in. Exactly. So I want to I want it to roll between the hole and that three feet behind it. I'm not always going to do it, but if I practice that, I'm going to get a really good sense of touching my hands. And if I practice my th three and six foot putts, and I've gotten really proficient at making those, the pressure is not that great. You know, a 30 footer, I roll it over to three feet, I kick it in. Because it is 100% true that 99.9% .9 of the putts you leave short. <laughs> Don't go in. Don't go in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The last key I want to talk about is chipping. It's really important that we become proficient around the greens at at least giving ourselves a shot at making that par. Yes. Right? And so by making a sh giving yourself a shot, I want you to be able to hit all your little chips from around the green inside of that six foot circle where we become proficient putters. And remember, let's try to take on the easiest chip shot possible. That may not mean pulling out a lob wedge, trying to carry it 20 yards, and check spin it to six inches. If you're trying to break 80, you don't have that one yet. Potentially. Most likely. Certainly, you shouldn't probably be trying it. Yeah, you should be so learning how to. So, the you get that thing on the ground, whether that means it, you're able to putt it, putt it. If you have to use a hybrid, use a hybrid. But get it on the ground, get it running if you can, mm -hmm. and let's get it inside this friendly circle, hopefully. Yes. And give yourself a chance to make par. Number one is don't screw it up so bad that you have no prayer of making par, right? Well, uh, a, a poor putt's better than a bad chip. Exactly. And a bad chip stinks. <laughs> so we don't want that. So let's get proficient at chipping and you're going to be on your way to breaking 80.